Salas, President of Reasons for Faith International Ministries and your Bible teacher here on Truth to Live By. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us and I want to extend an invitation for you to join us each and every week at this same time and on this same station. It is our prayer that God is using these programs to minister to you wherever you might be in your spiritual life. What do we know about God's love? What are those things that characterize His love? The title of this message is Characteristics of God's Love, and we're going to, as we have done in previous messages and sermons, we're just going to enumerate a number of the characteristics of God's love based on what we find in the Word of God. But it's something that we ought to give some thought to because Though it's something that we can't comprehend, it's certainly something that we can apprehend and experience. We certainly experience that the moment we come into a personal relationship with Christ. And we certainly experience it the moment we understand who Jesus is and what He's done. And we come by faith to the cross, seeking His forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. We're going to look at Scripture, and we're going to uh, look at seven characteristics of God's love. So we're going to be looking at a number of different passages. We're not going to look at any one particular passage of Scripture. We're going to look at several patches, passages of Scripture that will help us systematically bring together and get a bigger picture of what God's love is and it represents. And, 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 and uh, So we'll look, we'll look at uh, different passages. I do want to mention, though, before we start, that, that it's important for us, to us, for us as Christians to stop from time to time and just give some thought to the person of God. It's interesting to me that, you know, if God were to, you know, th there are not enough books in the world that could possibly contain everything there is to know about God. As a matter of fact, there is no way that our finite minds could possibly even come close to understanding God in His fullness. If we are honest with ourselves, no matter how long we've been Christians uh, for or, or how much study we've given to the Word of God, with a little bit that we do know about God based on what He's given us, what He's revealed to us in Scripture, we have difficulty understanding even that. And even if you had the capacity to fully understand everything you read about God in Scripture, which you can't, but even if you had the capacity to understand everything Scripture had to say about God, it would be the tip of the iceberg. God is so much beyond anything we can begin to imagine that when we think about God in that sense, it puts things back in, into perspective. It puts, puts us back into perspective. God is far beyond anything we can even begin to fathom. And even if we understand everything Scripture has to say to us about God, that would be just the tip of the iceberg. I think when we go to heaven, we spend eternity with God because any less time than eternity uh, would not suffice to come to know God for who He really is in His fullness. We're going to have to spend an eternity just to come to understand God more fully than we can here on earth, even with everything that He has revealed about Himself in Scripture. So when we look at characteristics of God's love, we're obviously looking at something He's revealed about Himself regarding His love that we can somewhat at least apprehend or put our arms around, but it's not really everything there is to know about either God or His love. God is that great. And that's why it, it, it humbles me just to think that a God who is that far beyond anything I can possibly fathom, and it will take me an eternity just to get to know once I leave this scene and go home, that that God would save me, a mere creature who violated His holiness, who violated His righteousness, 
and do my sin deserve hell, yet he saved me by providing for my salvation himself. You see, nobody else could pay for my sin because no other person, everybody else has sinned and thus have to make, would have to die for their own sin. God, knowing that there was nothing that I could do to either save myself or contribute to my own salvation, he decided to come himself in the person of Jesus Christ, blameless, sinless, holy, pure, to die for me so that I might have salvation if I come by faith to him. So let's start looking at some of the characteristics of his love. What does the Bible say about the love of God? Well, for example, we're going to look at John 3.16 perhaps the most popular verse in all of Scripture, in which Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know what Jesus is saying to us? One of the characteristics of God's love is that it's universal in its extent. Jesus said that God sent his own Son in order to make salvation available to the entire world. He didn't come just to save five or ten or a million or a billion. He came to pay for the sins of the whole world that if the whole world decided to trust Christ as their Lord and Savior, the whole world would be saved. He came to die for all all of us. He made salvation, has made salvation available to all of us. It does not mean all are saved. It means salvation is available to all who would come to Christ by faith. His sacrifice, in other words, is sufficient to save all and to save us completely. Once we have trusted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are completely and forever Saved. He came to die once for all to redeem me. How much does God love me? He died on the cross for me. And it is universal in its extent in that his death paid for the sin of all mankind, thus making salvation available to whomever by faith would come to Jesus and trust Him as their Lord and Savior. That's the first characteristic we notice about God's love. It's universal in His extent. Secondly, if we stay in John and go to chapter 17 and look at verse 23, listen to what Jesus says here. I in them and you in me, may they be bought or that may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. What is the second characteristic that Jesus points out about the, the love of God? It is infinite. It is infinite in its character. Listen, we are, listen, we are loved with the love of God. Do you get that? You are loved with the love of God. It is infinite in its character. There is no greater love than the love of God. And that is the love with which you are loved, with the love of God. I don't know about you, and certainly we worry about things that go on around us because we're human. But it certainly brings a great deal of reassurance and peace to my heart to know that in spite of the turmoil and in spite of the uncertainty that the world lives in, we have in us Christ 
and we are in Christ, and the love with which we are loved is the love of God Himself. It is universal in its extent. It is infinite in its character. Let's look at a third characteristic. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and many of you are familiar with this passage, and verse 14. For Christ's love compels us. Listen, listen to the words. For Christ loves, Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, that those and therefore all have died. You know what Paul is telling us here? One of the character, characteristics of God's love is that it is compelling in its power. Have you, and we don't, we don't need to necessarily talk about Paul or Peter or John. We could talk about more modern Christians we know, people like Billy Graham or Norman Geisler or, or, or you know, uh, Charles Stanley or people like that. What compels people like that to live a sold-out life for Jesus. Have you ever stopped to think about what it was that led Paul to leave everything that he valued in life, everything that he had been told was worth something? What would compel Paul to abandon all that to follow Jesus? You know what it was? It was his love for Paul. Billy Graham was compelled to become the greatest evangelist in the world and to preach the gospel to more people in the history of the church than anybody else because the love of Christ compelled them to do that. Think about that. How you live your life screams as to whether you even have a relationship with Him because if you have a relationship with Him, His love for you will have already compelled you to make a choice to live a life that would bring Him glory and honor. The love of God is characterized by the fact that it compels us to live in such a way in which we honor Him and glorify Him and bring Him praise through our lives. Why? Because we understand who He is and we understand what He has done for us. When Paul met Jesus, when Peter met Jesus, when Charles Stanley met Jesus, when Billy Graham met Jesus, when Johnny, when Susie, when Mikey met Jesus, they met the God of the universe who loved them with an everlasting love. And what he did for them has now compelled them to live in such a way that they will do what it takes by faith to move mountains for the glory of God. Another characteristic of the love of God is found in Romans chapter 8 and verses 35 through 37. Talk about reassurance. Listen to what Paul says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, listen, that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor, e nor any powers, neither height nor depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is Paul telling us? Listen, the love of God is characterized by the fact that it is inseparable in its object. Listen. Once you enter into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the love that God has for you and that which He has accomplished for you through the death and resurrection of Christ can never be taken away. Listen, and there's nothing that you can do as a Christian that will cause God to love you any less than He does now. 
His love for you, nobody has the power to separate you from the love of God. For nothing or nobody is greater than God Himself. And when God says, and He has said in His Word, when God says, I love you and you are mine, you are His forever. And there's absolutely nothing, nor trouble, nor tribulations, nor even Satan himself who can separate you from the love of God. His love is characterized by the fact that it is inseparable in its object. And you are the object of God's love. Think about that. You are the object of God's love love. And according to Paul, nothing can separate you from that. Listen, you might feel guilty about something. You might be down or depressed or frustrated about something, which might lead you to think that somehow you are less worthy or less loved by God. No, you're not. Let your heart be reassured that God's love, God's love is something that could never diminish nor be taken away from you. He loves you. He loves you with a divine love that nobody has the power to separate you from. Another characteristic about God's love is found in another epistle of Paul, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Many of you are familiar with this verse. I have been crucified with Christ, listen, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I want you to underline in your Bibles that two-letter word, me, M, E. Paul is telling us that one of the things that characterizes God's love is that fact that it is individual in its choice. Don't miss this, folks. We often read John 3.16 and we think of the entire world, but we often miss things other passages of Scripture tell us about our individual relationship with God. Paul, listen to what he says very carefully. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, listen, who loved me and gave himself for me. When was the last time you sat down in a quiet time and just bowed before God with a, with a grateful heart because you were impacted by the fact that God loved you individually, personally, so much. And He did what He did for you individually and personally. He knows you better than you know yourself. He has the hairs on your head counted. You personally are special to Him. And had you been the only person on this world, He would have still died for you so that you might be saved. You, you, don't forget that His love is characterized by the fact that it is individual in its choice. Listen to me. When Jesus came and hung on a cross. When Jesus was nailed on that cross and as He took on the sin of the world and as He endured the wrath of God as penalty for your sin, Jesus, as He hung on that cross, what He was saying is, I have done this for you, Steve. I have done this for you, Sue. I have done this for you, Christy. He 
died for you and he loves you. Don't lose sight about how individual his choice was as he died on that cross. Another characteristic is found in John chapter 13. And I want to look at verse 1. Listen to what it says. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. Jesus knew that it was just a matter of time before he would die a criminal's death, a brutal death, and endure the agony of God's unleashed wrath and anger on him because of the sin of the world. He knew the time was coming where he would accomplish that which he came to accomplish, and that was our salvation. And notice what he says, at, uh, what John says at the end. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. But I want to notice one thing uh, before we get to that. Let me read that again. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. And having loved him, having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The point John is making is that his love is characterized in that it is unchanging in its purpose. Jesus loved them to the end. And he showed his full extent of his love by hanging on that cross. Who died on that cross? Who died on that cross in order to demonstrate his love for us? God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died in that cross. The last thing I want to look at is in Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31, and I want to look at verse 3. The last characteristic, not the only seven, but the last we're going to look at. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. Listen. His love for you is characterized by the fact that it is everlasting in its duration. His love will never end. It will be a love that endures eternity, that will last eternity forever. What is your relationship to Jesus today? Are you a believer? And if you claim to be a believer, does your life demonstrate that statement? Are you living a life that shows you understand who Christ is and what He's done for you and how grateful you are for Him? And if you're not a believer, what are you waiting for? Christ loves you to the point that He proved it by dying on the cross for you so that you might not be in hell forever making payment for that sin. Father, we thank You for Your love and for that which is, characterizes that love. May we indeed live lives that are demonstrating our own love for You since You first loved us. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. For all of us here at Truth to Live By, we just want to let you know that it's an absolute privilege for us to be able to meet with you every single week. We want to let you know that we want to uh, make sure you join us once again each and every week at this time and on this station uh, so we can together study the Word of God. Uh, Truth to Live By is a ministry of Reasons for Faith International Ministries. This is a ministry committed to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to the defense of the historical orthodox doctrines of the Christian faith. If you are a Christian, it is our sincere prayer that God is using these programs, these messages, 
to speak to you, to build you up, to equip you for service so that you may be able to effectively work for him uh, in the work of the kingdom in this lost and dying world. If you're not in a personal relationship with Christ, then you sense the Holy Spirit prompting you to make that decision even right now. You can do that simply by repeating this simple prayer after me. Father, I recognize that I am a sinner and as such I am spiritually dead. I confess and repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me. I also understand that there is no other name under heaven given to us by which we must be saved other than Jesus. So Lord Jesus, I trust you right now as my Lord and Savior. I pray that you would make of me a new creation. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. For it is in his name I pray, amen. I can tell you on the authority of the word of God that if you have just prayed that simple prayer sincerely from your heart, your sins have been forgiven and you are now a member of the family of God as an adopted son or adopted daughter. If you have prayed that prayer, will you please contact us and let us know of this decision you have just made? If uh, you're a Christian, we want to know how God is using this program to minister to you. Will you drop us a note or give us a call as well? It is our honest prayer that God will continue to minister to all of you, use these programs to bring glory to himself, to build the saints, equip them for service, and to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. We pray for your prayers, and we pray that you would also pray for the viewers. Share us with your family and friends so that they may become part of the Truth to Live By viewing family. God bless you, and Lord willing, we will see you once again right here on this same station at this same time next week.